What is the power of the cartel in 2017? Well, it's magnificent. Uh, I'm not buying stories that they are suddenly powerless or don't know what they're doing or that they're dead. Uh, OPEC has an awful lot of power, and they just multiplied that power by uh, getting the Russians on, the, on their side of the table. So they have a lot of power. Within the power is the microeconomics of supply and demand. Which are you focused on right now, the demand dynamics of oil, or is it still supply, supply, supply? <laughs> Tom, surely that's a trick question. Yeah, you have to keep your eye on both, right? But uh, you're right that what has made most of the difference in the last four or five years is the supply side dynamic, uh, and that's the dynamic that OPEC are looking to change. Um, compliance thus far has been easy. How much harder does it get from now on? Well, I think that it doesn't get a whole lot harder, really. I mean, uh, I, I love it when people hold up pictures of the 1980s or the 1990s and how always compliance fades after you reach certain things. It's really not that relevant, is it? It's, it, it all, matters. all that matters really is how serious are Saudi Arabia, Russia and the rest about wanting to fix, quote unquote, this market. Uh, they have shown in the last couple of months that they can be very, very compliant indeed. Uh, they have shown that at times in their 30 or 40 or 50 yeah. year long history, uh, it's all about the intent forward. But my understanding is that thus far they've been able to bring forward maintenance as a result of which compliance has become easier. Uh, that Russia, for instance, doesn't have actually uh, a lot of wiggle room when it comes to starting up or slowing down some of its fields. So, so that's why I asked the question. Just from a technical management point of view, has it been easy to deal with these numbers thus far? And the pressure must be growing in certain quarters as well uh, to, push, to push on a little bit. Like Iraq is a classic case in point. How much harder is it going to become? Do you expect to see lower compliance numbers going forward from here? No, I expect the opposite, uh, because you're absolutely right. So far, they've had a bit of a, a laugh, right? They've, if you want, cheated themselves by, strictly speaking, complying with production cuts and not taking a barrel out of their export programs. And that now needs to happen going forward into the summer. They need to cut their export programs, and I then don't give a hoot about production compliance. No, they need to cut their exports, and that is a question of intent. And there you see the language tightening, and that is what I fully expect this summer. <clears throat> so uh, I expect to see both production compliance and export cuts. Let me pin you down on your oil price call. We've been range bound. We get a, diff a different set of opinions at Bloomberg Surveillance. I must admit, Jan, very few people look for a lower oil price. It's more about stability. Do you agree? It is about stability, but it's also about stability at a higher price. And I do think that you're right, that very few people look at a lower price because it's kind of difficult to imagine at this stage how prices are going to collapse, right? Uh, yeah, and just to, just to talk a little bit about, uh, I, I'm not really coming back to the compliance issue, but I'd just like to, to, to get a different angle on it. Mexico has hedged forward. Iraq apparently is thinking about it. If Iraq thinks about hedging forward, maybe 25% of its output, what message would that send? No, hedging is, is a different message, right? And I think that you're right. Uh, and your example of Mexico, Mexico has always had to hedge because they are that dependent, the Ministry of Finances, on uh, that income. And the ministry has hedged. It's never been Pemex, right? Uh, except for earlier this spring when PEMIS itself uh, was looking to ensure, if you will, that they would be able to keep their rigs in the field. Uh, Iraq, Iraq talks a lot, frankly. Uh, I would love to see them hedge. Fine, go, go for it. Uh, we also know that outfits like Exxon or Saudi Arabia or Aramco don't ever hedge because they would overwhelm the market. And as you put it earlier, they would probably not achieve a whole lot by doing that. Instead of they would just bring the, the long end of the curve down pretty good. So what's the per point of it and what's the purpose of it? Yeah, and a final question, if we could. China is in the news today, and of course we've waited decades for a hard landing, et cetera, et cetera. How does China affect the price of oil? 
uh, greatly. Uh, and of late, that has become the Chinese consumer who does the driving and consuming of gasoline or the flying and consuming of jet fuel. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's those two products that have driven an awful lot of Chinese oil demand, and that's going just fine, that oil demand growth in China is. Uh, then you have the chemical crackers and the NAFTA and, and propane consumption. They're going steadily. Uh, diesel is still a little bit of a question mark. What I'm getting at is that the Chinese economy is becoming ever more complex and ever more driven by consumers rather than by caterpillar mining equipment running around the mountains, right? So it's, it's become a more complex economy. Interesting. It is doing just fine. It has a debt problem like everybody else. Uh, and uh, in their infinite wisdom, the ratings agency saw fit to take somewhat of an issue with it. But that's uh, not all that close to my oil demand picture, really. Well, I understand it's not close to your remit, but fold it into Credit Suisse Asian economics as well. Do you have an optimism on China, which can be an optimism that supports the price of oil? I do have an optimism uh, on the demand side of things, and that includes China, but that really is founded on the big idea that across emerging markets we have more and more consumers and it becomes a numbers game, a numbers game of rising middle classes and as long as these middle classes keep expanding and their wealth keeps expanding, I am kind of optimistic about oil demand, yes. Jan, just one final quick question from me. Um, can I take you back to what you said a moment ago about hedging? The shape of the curve, the largely upward sloping shape of the curve at the moment, allows the U.S. shale teams to hedge forward. And that is, that is keeping them in the game in, in some ways. Is there an issue... Is there, a, is there a line of thinking that OPEC could adopt that says, you know what, what we need to do is actually invert the curve, we need to drag it down, and there, therefore hedging forward is very, very difficult, and that would have an impact into the United States. I, I, do you think we're going to get into sort of curve control here in terms of the way that OPEC thinks going forward? You, you can probably tell, despite the background being all that lovely, that I'm squirming a little bit when you say these things, right? But the, uh, I, it's, it's a little bit too uh, contrived, frankly, uh, on every count. Uh, the shale producers, yes, they hedge. They hedge out. They've hedged 17. They are under hedge for 18, and they haven't even touched 19 yet, right? And that's all those parts of the curve are sloping down already. Also, shale producers are facing what for many is ever more uncontrollable inflation. So how do you hedge that? Uh, I'm not for sure how much more hedging there's going to be in a backward curve. And to a degree, the curve has done the job already right now. OPEC themselves then trying to wrong foot the shale producers. And everybody in OPEC has done a whole lot of homework to figure out that it is really difficult to mess with the shale producers. The shale producers are their own animal. OPEC does not control them. I said earlier that OPEC is very, very powerful. But for them to expect that they can uh, somehow thwart the business plans of the American shale production juggernaut, not really. And I don't think that they are intending to do that in any way. Um, hedging on their own part, on the part of shore, uh, OPEC producers, maybe one or two of them that have a financial issue, uh, but not with the intent of wrong-footing the shale producers. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't really see that. Sorry.